Today we will demonstrate the workaround and mitigation for the Log4j vulnerability. This vulnerability is known as CVE 2021-44228. Um, the uh, Dell security uh, update is DSA-2021-277. We recommend that you check up on the, uh, the DSA uh, frequently as things change. That's DSA 2021-277. To begin the remediation, we promote uh, the user to root and we check the uh, contents of the Etsy environment file. Um, it should be empty, but if it's not, that's okay. Uh, then we go to the end of the file and uh, add a line that says log4j format message. No lookups equals true. Save the file. Tap the file out again to make sure that it was uh, saved properly. And then uh, check the uh, ownership and permissions of the file. The uh, file should be owned by root root and the permissions should be 644. Next, we will use a tool called Logpresso to um, remediate any jar files that are uh, located in any of the library directories. Um, go back to the home admin, the, uh, where the tool was stored previously. Now uh, the tool does need to be run as root. So uh, simply run Java jar Logpresso and then there's only one uh, command line argument, and that's the minus minus fix argument. If you wish, you can run it without the fix, and it will uh, simply um, find any files that uh, have this vulnerability. If you add the fix, it will fix them as well. Um, we're going to check every uh, subdirectory under user local, um, because there are uh, library directories, uh, principally user local live and user local live 64. Um, the tool takes about two minutes to run and scan all the directories. As it goes, it will enunciate which directory it's checking. You can see the results here. It took about 84 seconds to scan all of the live directories. It scanned 1900 directories and 21,000 files. Uh, it didn't find any vulnerabilities because this uh, example machine has already been mitigated. And so there's, uh, there's no longer any vulnerabilities to mitigate. But you can see the results here. Next, we will um, change to the admin user. Um, this creates a new shell so that we can test the environment variable that we set up previously. We'll do this simply by printing the, uh, the environment and checking for the existence of the string log4j. Here we can see that the environment variable has been set correctly. Next, we will check the status of the machine and uh, make sure that it's ready um, for the next steps. First, we'll check the status of the services with the PNCTL status. 
make sure that all the services are running. Next, we will stop the maintenance scheduler. Now, this allows us to take an additional checkpoint for safety. And once the maintenance scheduler has been stopped, we simply take a new checkpoint with the abnate checkpoint command. Next, we will use status.dpn to check the progress of the checkpoint. Here you can see that it's nearly complete. All 25 stripes have been checkpointed. If we check again, we'll see that it is. Checkpoints on a production system will be not as fast. They will probably take typically two to three minutes. Next, we will begin the remediation uh, by stopping the uh, Enterprise Manager web application. This has to be done as root, so we promoted to root. Test the uh, Enterprise Manager web app to see that it's stopped. Next step is to stop the management console. It's important at this point to point out that we should be using the mcserver.sh command to stop the management console. Uh, the dpn ctl stop mcs command uh, might present problems in this context. So please use mcserver.sh minus minus stop. Um, this process takes a few minutes uh, because the beginning of the process um, creates a, a, a Blush back up. Next, we'll test to see that the MC server is down. And finally, we simply restart the MC server. This will um, create a new uh, MCS context, uh, which uh, takes advantage of the environment variable that we set previously. This process also takes several minutes to complete. Once again, because
because of the dynamic nature of the remediation steps, it's important to check back with DSA 2021-277 for the latest uh, updates and remediation steps. Once the REST API service is started, we can promote again to the root user so that we can start the Enterprise Manager web app. And finally, one final test to restart the maintenance scheduler and the backup scheduler. Now that both schedulers have been restarted, we'll make a last check of the status of all of the services. Here we can confirm that GSAN is up, MCS is up, and both schedulers have been restarted. And a final quick check of the status of the GSAN shows that everything is running correctly. This is all the steps required to remediate the, the vulnerability.